So now we're going to look at painting some hills and mountains. And I've started with an example here of a snow-capped mountain. And I put a bit of masking fluid across the top of the hills. You need to put quite a lot of masking fluid on so that when you paint the sky, you don't get that sky onto any part of the hill at all. And then I've just wet the background and painted a loose sky in with a bit of cobalt blue with just a hint of rose madder with it. Once that's dried, I've removed the masking fluid and we're ready to start on the mountain itself. So I'm going to start mixing some colours. First of all, with a number eight brush, and I want a bluey grey colour. So I've got cobalt blue, hint of rose madder in it, and I'm going to add to that some burnt sienna, which will grey it. Not too strong at first, a fairly soft, light colour. And then I want to introduce a warmer colour, sort of a, an orangey brown. So I've got raw sienna and burnt sienna, a little bit stronger than the previous grey. And I want a hint of green. I'm going to take some oriole in and add to that some cobalt blue, and a little bit of raw sienna, almost like an olive green. I'm gonna get a bit bigger brush, a number 10, and I want a sort of chocolatey brown mixture, burnt sienna. This is stronger than all the other three colors, but I'm going to darken it and take some of the red out of it by adding cobalt blue. It gives us a sort of chocolate brown. Okay, so now those colors are ready, I'm going back to the number eight brush, making sure it's clean, and starting with the gray, I'm going to put a bit of colour into the hill, but at the same time as I'm doing this, I'm going to try and leave plenty of white because the, it's the white paper that will represent the snow. And as I, as I brush this colour down into the white background, I'm softening it in parts with a touch of water. And it's important at this stage that you make your brush strokes follow the contours of the hill, leaving Quite a bit of white paper showing through, that represents the snow. And as I work down with that, I'm introducing a little bit of the chocolatey brown, the mixture of burnt sienna and cobalt blue. I'm introducing that and bringing it down. Fairly dry brush, so that as I work this colour in, it does leave patches of white all the way down the hill. A bit more grey, describing the curve in the hill making the colour slightly paler towards the top of the hill. Just bringing that down. Some more grey over to this left hand side. And you can see all the time I'm making these brush strokes follow the contours of the shape of this hillside. Okay, bring a bit more of that warm brown in that chocolatey brown. Colour now getting a bit stronger as I come further down. Uh, I'm introducing a touch of the green. This is the mixture of oriolin and cobalt blue. And you can see that I put one colour on immediately after the previous colour so that you get that blending. They just they soften into each other. And now I want a richer, darker brown. So I'm going to add a bit more cobalt blue to that brown mixture to darken it even further. So as we get nearer to the foreground, the colour gets richer and stronger. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, a number four brush. And now I'm going to take some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. That will give us a richer, darker brown. And it's a thicker mixture as well. There's less water in this and more pigment. And I'm going to put a few little bits of detail into it, to sharpen it up a bit. Maybe a suggestion of a few distant trees or a hedgerow and wall, something like that. Just sharpening it up. If I get a bit of that near one or two of the streaks of white, it gives the impression that the white is that bit brighter. And I'm working fairly dry as well with quite thick paint to take advantage of the lovely texture of this rough paper. because I work into this, I want, I'm going back to the number eight brush and I want a bit more of that warmth, that mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. But I'll have a bit of that into this lower hillside here. Build up a bit more of the dark brown, give us a few richer, darker areas with the very tip of the brush. And I'm going back to the number four brush, still with the quite dark mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm putting a few more darks in. Use the side of the brush to get a bit of texture onto the snow. And a bit more of the dark. Now that will need a bit of shadow onto the snow. Before we do that, we need to give it time to dry. 
So now that that's dry, I just want to, to shape the hill a bit more with some shadow. So I'm mixing some cobalt blue with just a touch of rose madder, which is the exact colour I used in the sky. It's important that the shadow does echo the colour in the sky. Quite thin as well, shadow should be transparent. You should be able to see any colour underneath it. The light's coming from the right hand side. So I'm going to use the shadow pretty much on the left hand side of the, of the hill. And with a number four brush, we'll just start touching a bit of that, bit of that blue in, leaving more white at the right hand side where the light's catching it. I'm using the small brush so that I don't put too large a marks in and, and hide all the work I did previously. Bit on the distant hill here, a bit of shadow working down the left hand side of each hill. So just to finish this off, I'm going to add a few little touches of opaque white paint. Now this adds a little bit of sparkle to the scene, it certainly does enhance it, but you must be careful not to overdo the white and start covering up a lot of the colours that you put in previously. I've got a number four brush which I'm just dampening slightly, um, but basically the opaque white is the same thickness as it comes out of the tube. If you water down opaque white, it becomes semi-transparent. And once you see the colours underneath through it, it defeats the object of it being opaque. And there's just one or two areas where I want to put a, a few suggestions of snow, a few highlights, letting it pick up the texture of the paper again as well. Um, maybe a little bit of white into, into here. You can revive areas that you think you may have been a bit heavy with the colours, but as I say, with the white, it's, it's less is more. You need to be careful with it. Keep stepping back and looking at what you're doing so that you don't get carried away and overdo it. And I think that'll be enough. So now that that's finished, you can see how important it is that my brush strokes follow the slope of the hillside. You have to describe to the viewer the lie of the land and the shape of the things that you're painting. Also, it's very important when you're adding the opaque white that you do hold back a bit and ask yourself when you've done enough. Keep stopping and checking what you've done. It's very easy to obliterate a lot of the previous work by putting too much of this opaque colour on. So here's an example of a finished painting of a ruined castle on the shores of Loch Awe in Scotland. Very atmospheric and you can see the shadows across the distant hills and how the cold blues and whites at the top of the hill gradually come down to warmer browns and yellows as we get nearer to the foreground. Let's have a look now at how we can create that effect of mountains being partly hidden behind low cloud and mist. And I started by drawing the mountains in in very faint pencil lines. That's important. You don't want to see the pencil lines through the misty shapes later on. So they're very faint. And then without any masking fluid, I've just painted the sky over the whole of the mountain area using some cobalt blue and rose madder for a blue mixture and some cobalt blue, rose madder and burnt sienna for that grey that you can see at the top and for the clouds in the middle. And now I'm going to mix some colours to paint the mountains with. So I've got a number eight brush. And so that the hills echo some of the colours in the sky, for, that, for the sake of continuity, I'm going to start with some of the cobalt blue and rose madder again, greying it slightly with a touch of burnt sienna. So it, really it's a very similar colour to the clouds in the sky. And then as I work down into the hillside, I need a little bit of warm orangey brown, some raw sienna and burnt sienna. I want a hint of green as well, so I'm taking some Oriole in again with just a little touch of cobalt blue and raw sienna, a sort of olive green. And I want a stronger colour now, a rich brown made with burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue. A rich dark brown that's thicker than all the other colours. I'm going to start at the top of the hill with the blue-grey mixture. I'm going to paint the furthest away hill first and then work my way towards the larger, more foreground one. So I start by putting the very top of the hill in with the grey. Introduce a little touch of the raw sienna and burnt sienna. Warm the colour as it comes further down. And then I'm cleaning the brush, really thoroughly clean it, and adding some clean water to fade the colour away as we come down the hill. You need to keep cleaning the brush because you start off with clean water on the brush but as it picks up the paint, it becomes dirty. So you need to really keep that clean. And then adding into that newly wet area, 
in a moment we can start to put a bit more colour. So let's put a touch more of that raw sienna and burnt sienna and a bit of the, the green, the olive green colour, bringing it down towards that line at the bottom of the hill where it meets the, the lake. These colours in. As I come down, I'm going to introduce some more clean water to lift the colour out and create that sort of misty look. A bit more green at the water's edge. Touch more grey into the hill as well in the distance there. I think we need to take a bit more colour out, introduce a bit more of the mist. And when you use the clean water, it leaves a glimpse of the sky behind. And that's how we create that lost and found effect. Now at the water's edge, I want a darker, stronger colour. So I'm introducing the rich dark brown into the damp background. Now I can leave that to dry and immediately start work on the larger hill. But because it's a bit bigger, I'm picking up a larger brush now. This is a number 10 brush. Good fine point though, so I can be accurate where I'm putting the colour. And we start with that grey mixture again. Right at the top of the hill. Let's make it a bit richer, I think. A bit more burnt sienna in it to grey it a bit more. Starting to introduce a little bit of the warmth, the warmer colour, the raw sienna and burnt sienna. And again, wash the brush thoroughly and add in some clean water so that you're leaving a glimpse of the colours behind it. And then we can take up with the orangey colour in the middle of that mist so that it gradually sort of emerges from it. And then the green, a bit of that olive green. We'll put a bit more of the grey into it around here. And then I'm going to introduce the really strong dark brown. I'm going to put a lot of this at this part of the hill to bring it forward, really bringing this down to the, to the water's edge. So now this is finished, we can see just how vital it is to get that lost and found effect amongst the hills. Very important then that the sky is painted all the way down behind them, or these would look like just blotches of white paper. Well, that's the end of this programme, but I hope you'll join me next time for some more watercolour landscape top tips. <laughs>